This video is made possible by our loyal Patreon supporters. Visit patreon.com slash psychytruth. I have tons of awesome videos already ready for you. You can join me on Amazon Prime Video. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. Follow us on social media for tips, tutorials, giveaways, and daily inspiration. Hey, welcome. Today I have for you a very special treat because yesterday we did all that arm balance work. Today, some relief for your shoulders and your neck. Shoulder relief is one of the number one things that my students in my classroom come and ask for. I know that we tend to get bound up in our neck and in our shoulders. So maybe if you've been following along, you're starting to notice your upper back and your shoulders are feeling tight and tense. And this video is going to be perfect for you. In addition to that relief, we're going to improve your range of motion so that you're going to have improved performance anytime your workout or yoga practice requires some upper body activity. I do recommend grabbing a washcloth just in case you need a little more space between your hands for some of our binds. And we'll get started in a seat. So come up tall, reach your arms up overhead, and extend down into your sit bones and up through your hands. So the sides of your waist are getting long, and you can feel this wrapping in of your pinky fingers. Good. Take a breath in, gaze up, and then side bend. Place your right hand down, lift up and over with your left arm. For a lot of us, when we're feeling stuck and tense in our shoulder or in our neck, turning our gaze up is a little bit too much. So throughout this video, you're welcome to instead look at the bottom thumb and provide some relief into the side of your neck. Good. On your breath in, lift through the center and then switch to the other side. Look for the side bend to not just be in your shoulder area, but all the way through your rib cage as well. And again, if taking your gaze up feels a little too intense, why not try some ease today? Balancing out our effort in our ease is critical when we are moving into a more intense yoga practice, or if we have some physical goals like weight loss. It's not all hard all the time. Inhale, lift it up. Good, on your exhale, take your hands to your heart, turn over your right shoulder, place your right hand behind you and your left hand on your knee or on your thigh. Lengthen up through your spine and then turn your gaze over your back shoulder and you're gonna get a deep stretch from about your ear all the way down to your collarbone. If it's too intense, just reduce the amount that you twist your neck. Great, come back through center. Same idea, other side. Turn over your shoulder, place your back hand behind you, opposite hand on your knee or on your thigh. Sit up really tall, that's putting space in between your vertebra, and then when you twist, there's more room. Let your gaze come over your back shoulder any amount until you feel some relief in your neck. Great job, come back to the center. On your inhale, reach up. And on your exhale, take your hands to your heart. Let's link our breath with our movement. Inhale, sweep it up. Exhale, hands to heart. One more time, sweep it up, inhale. Exhale, hands to heart, really nice. So let's take it over to a tabletop. Place your shoulders over your wrists your hips over your knees, and then bring your big toes to touch and shift back into a child's pose. And as you come back into a child's pose, allow your arms to go really long. One of the reasons that we want to balance out the effort in our ease is that relaxed muscles improve our performance. When we get tight and tense in a heavy workout, it's essential to relax and release those muscles so that they can improve tone and strength as they rest and recover. If you do not build in time for recovery, you're just going to overtax those muscles and you won't notice any strength gains. Crawl your fingertips a little farther forward enough that your elbows lift off the mat 
scoot your forehead forward maybe about half an inch until you feel long underneath your armpits. And then place your elbows down and bring your hands to prayer. And you're going to tuck your thumbs to the base of your neck. This might be plenty for you in the side body, in the lats, in the triceps, and in the shoulder, shoulder girdle. If you have a little more space, then walk each of your elbows forward once or twice like a little army curl and allow the heart to melt through. That melt sensation might be new for you, so take it easy and slow as you start with this deeper stretch. Now add deep breath into the side body like you're trying to widen the rib cage east to west. Notice your body's ability to stretch from the inside out. Take another breath like that wide into the side ribs. Let the breath out. Unwind your arms, walk them to the right edge of the mat and place your left hand on top of your right. Lace your fingers so the left fingers slide down into the webbing of the right hand. Now gently pull into the left side body. So you're pulling some space into the rib cage. Your arms are long. Great. Walk your hands to the other side of your yoga mat. Same idea, right hand on top of your left. Lace your fingers to the webbing and gently pull. I'm feeling some residual tension from a previous workout of mine earlier this week, right underneath my armpit. You're probably feeling some sensation there as well. Direct your breath into it. Good. Walk back through the center, lift yourself up to a tabletop, and just take a little bit of cat-cow just to release some of that deep stretch. So on the inhale, drop the belly, lift your chest, and on your exhale, round your spine. Two more times, soften the elbow as you go through. That provides just a little bit of space for the shoulder. Good, and then round. The shoulder itself is one of the most complex joints. It has so many different movements and so many different muscles that it's really easy to get tense and tight and stuck and unbalanced in our shoulders and in our neck. Come through middle. Tuck your toes and then just shift back to downward facing dog. And let's make it a shorter dog today. So scooch each hand back about one handprint and bend your knees so you can press into your hands and feel your chest work back. Seal down through each and every one of your finger pads and allow your neck to be very long in between your upper arm bones. So a lot of times as we get into our yoga practice, if we're feeling really tense or tender in our upper back, we tend to kind of squeeze or we lift our ears and our shoulders really close together. Here you want to find some space for your neck so that there's freedom to move. Just a couple more breaths. This time you're spending is warming up the arms, warming up the shoulder muscles, so they'll be nice and pliable as we continue to stretch and open them. Great. Rock forward to a plank pose. You may need to walk your hands forward just a little bit from that short dog, and then lower slowly down to your belly, and you can always touch your knees down first. Good. So as you come down onto your belly, bring your elbows underneath your shoulders and grip the ground with your finger pads. Push into your forearms just enough that the first few ribs lift off the ground, but not so much that your belly button comes up. Take your shoulders back and down, just opening up through the chest and breathe. And as you breathe, direct your breath wide across your collarbones, like you're trying to stretch your pec muscles from the inside out. Our chest is where we get a lot of tightness just from habitual tension in our day. Driving or sitting or slumping forward just from bad posture. So this pose is great for your posture. And when we have good posture, we feel more confident, 
we look taller and slimmer, and we don't have this forward head thing going, which actually causes a lot of back pain, which can take you out of a workout, right? You don't want to skip your days. So working on your posture is going to make sure that you can stay involved in your physical activity and feel really strong in the process. Take another breath in. Good. On your breath out, make a fist with your left hand and then bend your right knee. You're going to take your right hand back to your foot and then just gently kick your foot back. So this is just a variation of a pose called frog. But instead of working our hip flexor, well, like we normally do in this posture, we're using the pull of the foot back to stretch the chest. Good. Take another breath in and then release, make a fist with your right hand. The fist causes the arm to get really strong so you don't collapse. So sit up tall through the chest, bend into your back knee, your left knee, reach back and grab. So maybe your foot feels far, that's when you can always take your towel and just loop it around your foot. From there, kick your foot back. Notice if you're just pulling the shoulder out of socket. You want to pull the shoulder blade into the back body and roll the shoulder head back. From there, you'll open up the chest muscle without overtaxing the shoulder joint. Take another breath in and then release. Great job. Lift up to tabletop, hands and knees and reach your right arm up. On an exhale, thread the needle. So we've been here before in this course but in this thread the needle, we're going to add a little variation. Start by extending the left arm forward, then sweep it up to the ceiling and wrap it behind your back. So that little extension forward is just to keep you long and then the wrap causes the twist to deepen and you might notice a little more opening for that top shoulder. If for any reason the wrap or the bind causes you pain, you can always just place your hand back down. Continue to breathe. One more time. Good. Left hand on your shoulder. Lift your right arm up and place your hand back down. Let's do the left side. Left arm up, thread the needle, grow through the right side body, then lift your arm up and wrap it behind your back. So you don't have to grab onto your thigh if that's not accessible. You can always take your hand just to your sacrum as well and continue to hug the shoulder head back. Notice if this position is crunching your neck. If so, you're welcome to move your ear farther forward so that your neck has more space. Continue to fill your breath throughout the entire barrel of your chest. So not just in the front, but also into the back ribs and the side ribs. So in addition to the physical posture, stretching the body, your deep breathing is releasing the body from the inside out. Great. Place your right hand underneath your shoulder. Sweep your left arm back up to the ceiling and then touch down. So from here, we're going to combine the elements of that frog variation with a tabletop in tiger pose. So extend your right leg back. Take your left hand to touch your heel or grab your foot. If you have a good hold on your foot, zip the belly in, loop the left shoulder head back, and then gently kick. So this is kind of a bonus pose because you're getting a big chest expansion as well as a back bend. So continue to turn on the back chain of the body, hamstring, glutes, spinal muscles, and open up through the front chain of the body. Great, one more inhale. Exhale, release that down. We'll take the other side. Left leg back, right arm sweeps back, bend the knee, grab onto the foot, or just touch the heel. And if touching the heel is all you've got today, that's totally fine. There's no need to push it. 
So the shoulder joint is so complex, which also means that we have to be super duper mindful. It's great to have full range of motion in our shoulder, but we don't want to become overly open. So we're balancing strength and flexibility as well as our effort and our ease. One more breath in. Exhale, release. Good, tuck your toes. I'm going to bring this washcloth back with me. We'll use it in a moment. Downward facing dog. Lift your hips up and back. Let your head shake out a little bit. Take another breath in right here and down dog. Press into your hands. Let the biceps wrap in towards your earlobes just a little bit and use the exhale to let the head fall. Usually we have a really vigilant down dog, like we're gonna jump forward, but allow the body to just get really still here. Breathe in. When you breathe out this time, soften the knees just a little bit so they're not locked and begin to walk your hands backwards, back of your mat. Feet will stay either hips width distance or a little wider and we'll take a ragdoll pose. From ragdoll today, interlace your fingers, place them at the back of your skull and let your elbows point towards the floor. So you do not need to pull on your head at all. Gravity and the weight of your arms is plenty. So be really sweet on your neck. Now, if for any reason just unzipping the back of your neck feels too intense today, then by all means, your hands can always come back down to the ground. There's this common misconception in weight loss and fitness programs, especially when we have really big goals for ourselves, that the more sore you are, the better. And that's absolutely not true. Muscle soreness is a sign that you worked really hard and you probably need to take some time to recover. Muscle soreness can also be a sign of dehydration. So we want to make sure that any soreness that we're feeling we're addressing, take that communication from your body and investigate it. Take another breath in. Release your hands down. Grab your towel and then come all the way up to stand. So we're going to come back into a ragdoll variation, but this time with our hands behind the back. So if you are tight in the chest, the towel can just be a nice go-go gadget arm for you so that you don't have to strain your shoulder joint. Loop the shoulder heads back, bend the knees a lot, drape the belly between your thigh, and then just drop your head down as you rinse the knuckles over the back of your skull. Shift just a little bit of weight forward into the ball mounds of your feet in case you're sinking back in your heels. It'll give you more stability and will allow your upper body to fall a little more deeply into this pose. Take another breath in. Good, and your breath out, relax your hands down. You can set that prop off to the side and then crawl forward back into your downward facing dog. On your next breath in, rock forward to plank pose and then slowly lower all the way to your belly. Remember your knees can always come down first. And from here, we're going to take my favorite variation of Cobra pose, Spider Cobra. So if you have any low back tenderness for this variation, I recommend you keep your toes just gently tucked. You don't have to do anything with them. Just give your body what it needs, all right? And then from there, Sweep your fingertips off the edges of your mat and then drop your head. Loop your shoulder heads up, back and down, and then lift up from the back of your heart, pressing into the fingers. Then your skull will come up. So it's sort of like seal pose, but on your fingertips and wide. From there, turn your gaze to the right, dip your left shoulder down and let your ear come close to the yoga mat. So you'll notice my shoulder blades are hugged into the spine and onto the back ribs. On your next breath in, press back up. Head is the last thing to move. 
turn and dip other side for me i always get this nice upper back adjustment when i do this posture if i find that big squeeze and if my body is harboring some tension there so you may or may not experience a pop as long as it doesn't hurt you're a-okay good press into the fingers inhale through the center switch your gaze and then dip good one more time lift up through the center switch your gaze and dip great come back through the center place your chest down bring your hands underneath your forehead and drop your forehead you can relax your toes you can even wag your heels side to side if you need to relax your back beautiful now from here we'll go into wishbone pose so for wishbone pose there's a couple variations i'm going to take you through a really nice gentle wishbone draw your right arm out from your shoulder and place your left hand next to your rib cage ear down to the mat now begin to roll over your right shoulder but draw your knees to your chest so it just sort of feels like you're lying on your side, but that arm is out to the side. In some variations of this pose, we actually step the foot behind us, but I find that can be taxing on the back. So this gives you all of the shoulder stretch with a little more gentleness in your spine. Take one or two more breaths. Great, release, belly back down, switch your gaze. The left arm will go out, ear is heavy. Begin to roll over your shoulder and draw the knees to your chest. When it comes to stretching, bigger is not always better. You wanna to go to the place that you can breathe through because our bodies initial tendency is to actually tighten up when we feel a stretch and so you have to sort of ease into it and be there for a few seconds before you notice that there's been new space or that sort of releasing sensation of ah that feels good in the stretch so there's no need to rush take another breath in Great, breath out, come back to your belly. Press up to a tabletop. And just move through a little bit of cat-cow to release, softening the spine once again. Just bringing some fluid movement back into the body. A few rounds. You might notice that cow or cat one or the other feels really good and if that's the case feel free to linger take one more round exhale into your cat your final cat press into your hands and then come through the middle and we're going to come down onto our back so come on down to your back Place your fingertips down by your heels. Roll your shoulder blades underneath you. And we'll take bridge, but with a bind. Lift your hips up. Gather your shoulder blades towards one another and bind your hands. If that feels too tight, you can always just keep your hands down. But if the bind is available, hug the shoulder blades in like a shelf behind your heart. Push into your feet. So this is less about the big back bend here. So your hips can stay about level with your knees, but hug the shoulder blades in. Now move the chest towards the chin slightly and notice if you're adding too much pressure on your neck. If you are, back out of the pose a bit or lower the hips just a bit. Take another breath in. And on your exhale, unravel, unwind, Bring your knees together to touch and let the shoulder blades pull out from underneath you. 
I like to turn my palms face up. We'll reset the spine with just gentle windshield wipers right to left, small bit of rotation. It's also really nice little low back massage. Can feel good on your outer hips when you swing all the way to one side and then the other. Great. And then bring your knees down into your chest. Release your feet to the floor. For our Shavasana today, we'll bring the soles of the feet together, knees butterfly open wide, as long as that's okay for your inner thighs and your low back. And we'll take a variation of goalpost arms or a soft W in the arms to keep the chest wide open. Close your eyes and concentrate your breath through the center line of the body. We're sharpening our skills of relaxation and stress relief, as well as stress tolerance and stress management. In addition to physiologically being great for your body so that you can rest and recover, when we have the resiliency in our mental attitude and our emotional well-being, we also are supporting our goals because it helps us stave off some of the emotional bad habits that sabotage our weight loss. So taking a deep breath instead of raiding the refrigerator. <laughs> or going for a walk or calling a friend instead of just sitting on the couch. Take a couple more breaths. This sort of video where we are moving through some deep release for the body doesn't have to be done just on today's day because it was next in the course. You can access this anytime you need, anytime you need to tap into a little extra love and attention for your shoulders and your neck, and I hope you do. Great. Close your knees with your hands, roll to your right side, and then press yourself up to a seat. We'll meet with our hands at our heart and a really tall spine. Thanks for showing your shoulders and your neck a little bit of love today. I know after yesterday's arm balance, you definitely needed it. I did too. I can't wait to see you in the next video. And until then, namaste. Today's bonus tip is all about posture. And before you roll your eyes and think, what does posture have to do with weight loss? Let me share some stuff with you. First of all, when we have a posture in which our shoulders are rolled back, our chest is open, we feel tall, you naturally look slimmer, and you feel more confident. And you don't just feel more confident because you look taller or you look a little more in command. You actually feel more confident because great posture stimulates happy hormone release and actually the hormones that help us feel more powerful. So posture at a chemical level in our body has an effect with how we feel. So it absolutely has everything to do with any physical goal that you have. Posture is key. So why does our posture get bad? Well, as with anything in our body, it's easy to just blame ourselves, bad habits, yada, yada. But then let's look at why the body adapts to what it does. Essentially, the body will learn to adapt to whatever you introduce to it over and over and over and over again. So it's nothing to feel bad about, it's just a fact. So if you work at a desk or you drive a lot, you're introducing a forward, closed in, rolled full forward shoulder, maybe your head falls forward, that position, you're introducing it over and over and over and over. And so your body does what it's designed to do. It adapts, your chest gets a little bit tight, your belly closes in a little bit and the muscles that line your spine get a little bit weak and a little stretched out and not really turned on. They're not awake to the things that you need them to do. But the good news is you don't have to quit your day job. Please don't. You just have to make some simple switches. 
For example, you'll notice in my chair, I'm not actually sitting all the way in the back of the chair. I'm sitting about halfway forward. This causes me to actually have to use my core muscles to sit up. So bonus there, you're actually gonna retrain some of those muscles if you just sit halfway up your chair. The next thing is look for your shoulders to roll back. I actually have a lot of my clients and I do it for myself at home, time myself. So if I am sitting down for maybe a video call for a long period of time with a client or with a colleague, I actually will get up at least every hour, if not more frequently, to stretch and move my body. So that means I'm gonna move forward, I'm gonna move backwards, I'm gonna twist a little bit, and I'm going to move side to side. When we think about posture, one of the most key components is spinal health. So if we move our spine in all of its directions, we're more likely to hit and tone and awaken muscles that help us stay strong and vital and supple in our spine. The next thing I want you to be cognizant of is how far forward is your head. So if your neck is in this position all the time where your head is far forward, you're putting pounds and pounds and pounds of extra pressure on vertebra in your neck, in your cervical spine that are not designed to bear that much weight. And that's what causes tension, headaches a lot of times, a lot of feelings of discomfort in your neck, in your shoulders, in your head. And when I have a headache or my shoulders hurt or my neck hurts, I know that the last thing I'm thinking about is going to do my yoga class or my HIIT workout. And so you're more likely to skip your workout if you're in pain. So if I haven't convinced you enough that posture absolutely has to do with your weight loss, well, then try this one on. When we look and feel more confident, studies have shown we're actually more able to land the date with the person we want to have a date with. We're more likely to get the job when we go into an interview because we're putting out vibes that other people are attracted to and we feel really comfortable in our own skin. Whenever it comes to a weight loss goal or any health goal, we usually can look at all of the reasons why we want it, all of the other aspects of our life, be it romantic aspects or career aspects, or we just want to feel more comfortable in our own skin. All of those things are important to your life. And posture is telling the world how you feel about yourself and telling yourself how you feel about yourself. So practice sitting up tall, avoid something forward, Put a little timer on your phone and do simple exercise, like rolling your shoulders backwards a few times, twisting in your chair, or even side bending. And if you can, get up, stand up, walk around your office. If you're stuck on an airplane, walk the aisle once or twice. All of these things are simple ways that you can keep your posture muscles awake and ready to do the job that they are designed to do. When you stay aware of your posture, you're not only awakening these muscles, but you're training your brain to feel confident, alive, and ready for anything that's coming at you. And you'll also experience the added benefits of less headaches, less neck pain, and less shoulder tension. And who doesn't want that? So pay attention to your posture today and every day. And if you're up for it, set a timer. Next time you're stuck in the desk, remind yourself you need to get up at least once every hour, if not more, so that you can put some movement back into your body and reopen your bright, shining, beautiful face, a nice broad collarbone, and a lot of confidence so that everybody who meets you knows that you are all about feeling alert and alive in your own skin. I'm so excited to be doing this challenge with you. You're doing a great job. Stay committed. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Wellness Plus is available on Amazon, which you can stream from your home on your phone, tablet, or TV. Join Wellness Plus today and get your first seven days free. Introducing Yoga Plus, offering a free series every month with over 300 different videos. Take control of your health. Work out anytime, anywhere. Yoga Plus. Download now for free.